Welcome to Easter Sunday services. I'm Pastor Chris Titus, and today, of course, we're going to talk about the risen Lord and what that means in our life and certainly what it meant in the context of when it happened over 2,000 years ago. So uh, let's first begin in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are thankful for your plan of salvation, uh, that plan that reflected the sorrow and challenge and sacrifice of Good Friday and the joyous moment of redemption and resurrection on Easter morning. We thank you for that, Lord. We ask you to uh, honor us uh, by allowing us to honor you through our words and our music today. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. So it is Easter Sunday, depending when you're listening to this video, of course, and we celebrate the greatest event in human history, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, folks celebrate Easter in many different ways outside the context of a church sanctuary. There might be family dinners, uh, Easter egg hunts, Easter bonnets, baskets filled with candy and jelly beans and even peeps. So these are all fun ways for us to uh, celebrate Easter, but really what we're supposed to focus on is that Easter is more than a holiday, some time for us to be off from the busyness of our lives, but it's a holy day. In fact, it would be argued the holiest of days uh, celebrating Jesus' resurrection. So it's a time to consider what God has done for us and why this was done for us. And so today we'll reflect on that. What's the core belief that surrounds Easter morning? It's the empty tomb. And this theologically is something for us to consider today as we think about the emptiness of that tomb, Jesus' resurrection, and so why is this crypt, this empty crypt, so important? And I think generally speaking, when we think about things that are empty, it's never positive. A little different in this case. But generally, when we think of empty, we think of things like somebody calling you empty-headed. That's not a good thing. Or our empty wallet, an empty gas tank, empty coffee pot, empty refrigerator maybe pursuing empty dreams. So the word empty usually is not a positive thing, but in the case of Easter, we praise that there is an empty tomb. So we need to consider today why that is. I think in general, it is because it provides us hope, hope in the here and now, and hope for eternal life when this life comes to an end. The hope of God's forgiveness, the hope of his peace. And we have to think about it in terms of what it really is. The emptiness of the tomb is not the end of God's work, but it's the beginning. It's a way for us to be invited into relationship with him. As Methodist Charles Wesley wrote in his lyrics in 1739, Christ the Lord has risen today. Alleluia. Love's redeeming work is done. Alleluia. And so this is what we contemplate when we think about the empty tomb, the empty grave. And it's really the basis for our celebration of Easter. And we think back to the conversation we had on Good Friday and the sacrifice, the atoning sacrifice that Jesus made for our sins. Then he's sealed in a grave, a guarded tomb. And we are told that death appears to have won. That's the discouragement that his disciples were feeling at the time, according to Scripture. Jesus is locked away, and this devastation for his followers is acute. They feel it in the deepest pit of their stomach. But we can relate to that, can't we? We've all lost loved ones. We know what that feeling of pain and sorrow is like. And so the disciples were going through the same thing, the same devastating feelings. All hope was lost, and death appears to have won. So the empty tomb of Jesus Christ restores hope. It lets us know that devastation does not have the last word, nor does sorrow. Jesus not only conquered death, but in his victory, we have victory because we are his followers. And when this temporary life ends, as it will for 100% of us, we're going to have that relationship with him, a relationship with a risen Lord, a redeemer, somebody who has rescued us 
from our own sin and folly in this world. So our key scripture today, all four Gospels talk about the resurrection. We're going to look at a couple of them today. First, beginning in Matthew's account, look at chapter 28, beginning in verse 1. After the Sabbath, which would have been Sunday morning, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and was going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were as white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they were shocked and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who is crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell the disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into the Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid and filled with joy, and ran to tell the disciples. So there's a lot in this passage. This is the incredible moment, uh, the recognition of what's happened Easter morning for these women who have gone to the tomb, still grieving, still in sorrow. And they've gone there Sunday morning after the uh, Sabbath of Saturday. And in fairness to the guards here, we often see them as, as sort of silly. They experience the angel and they appear like dead, man, which, dead men, which means they fainted or passed out, keeled over in fear. How many wouldn't have done the same thing? I mean, we really can't blame them, can we? I mean, after all, this was supposed to be an easy gig for them, a simple assignment. Your job is to guard a dead man. But it turns out between the earthquake and the angel sighting, the guards freak out and pass out. So again, probably not an expected reaction. So almost every Easter, some pastor somewhere reminds his congregation that the stone, which is rolled back here by the earthquake and angel, is rolled back so that we can see into the grave, not because Jesus has come out of the grave through that opening. Jesus was already risen when the angel uh, rolled the stone away. And so we have to understand that we're supposed to look into that grave and we're supposed to see the hope that has been provided to us because the Lord has risen. So the celebration of Easter is the celebration of the empty tomb that we are saved because Jesus is risen, because after all, if there's no resurrection, there's no rescue. There's no salvation for us. There's no heavenly destination because we remain sinners in relationship with a sinless God. Because Jesus is risen, he is not here, the angels tell the women. Luke's gospel does mention the second angel in recording the event. Take a look at Luke 24, beginning in verse 2. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood before them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to and in the hands of sinners to be crucified and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. So both Matthew and Luke are really trying to get our focus on the emptiness of the tomb, the empty grave. And that is so that we understand this is not a situation of a missing body. This is not a situation where we're going to you know, call in CSI to understand what happened. Clearly, Jesus is risen and alive. And that's what we need to understand from this event. In fact, the angels are basically saying to the women, hey, wake up. He told you this. Why the heck are you looking for the living among the dead? Kind of sarcastic, but it's true. What were they doing there? He said he would 
rise again, and he has. So why are you surprised is kind of what the angel said. But the bottom line theology here is that Easter is about the empty tomb. It's something for us to contemplate, especially when we understand that this event is for our benefit. The, the stone is rolled away so that we can see inside and understand that resurrection has occurred and that's available to us as well. Otherwise, we remain separated from God, same old, same old. Our sin, our flaws, our mistakes keep us from a right relationship with God, being righteous with Him, and certainly keep us from a heavenly destination when this life comes to an end. And Easter is there to remind us instead that this is a rescue story, that Jesus' death on the cross and His resurrection is there to rescue us from ourselves, from all of the sin that we either uh, participate in or experience in the world, we are to be rescued, and Jesus is our Redeemer. And hopefully that leads, leads us to commit our lives to Jesus in a way that is profound, that is deep and appreciating what's done. His victory becomes ours, becomes our rescue and our faith looking forward to the here and now and also onward to heaven. This is why Easter is so amazing. This is why there's such celebration and joy. Because of Easter, we live our lives knowing that Jesus is risen and we have the hope of salvation. Because after all, otherwise, without that hope, we place our being, our lives, our existence, our mind, our bodies, our spirituality in the hands of the world and all of the emptiness. It would be like if our diet consisted only of eating Easter candy and peeps. Eventually, we would starve to death. The world tells us all kinds of empty things, like if we had more money or perfect relationships or more fun stuff to do, we would be filled. But the truth is, it makes us empty. The worldly philosophy has been empty since the beginning of time, which is why we stagger through this world, struggle in this world, unsatisfied. It's like an empty gas tank, and yet we need to go somewhere. We are empty. The empty coffee pot that we need that one cup in the morning to get us going, or the empty dreams that we chase that end up leaving us depressed or discouraged or dissatisfied. The world is full of emptiness. But as I said at the beginning, that kind of empty has a negative connotation to it, where the emptiness of the tomb on Easter is the greatest event that's ever happened to humanity. Without the hope of Easter, we are simply empty vessels plowing through this life, not able to respond to the things that are happening to us. We even get too busy for Jesus. But in the empty tomb of Easter, we have hope in a different way. We have hope in God, no longer looking for life among the dead. Instead, we are focused on Christ. And if you want to change your life, if you want things to be different in your life, it's your commitment and following of Christ, no longer in the tomb, but risen, that can change everything. When you struggle in the world, you need more Jesus, not more world. And maybe you're hearing this right now and you haven't made that kind of commitment to Christ. Thought about it. Maybe you're a Jesus fan, but you're not really a follower. To be in relationship with Christ means that you are surrendering to a Savior who wants to rescue you from yourself and from your circumstances, from this crazy life. Now, maybe you're already in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Then Easter is a time for you to recommit to that, to prayer, to reading scripture, to being in church as often as you possibly can. Because the empty tomb is there to remind you of all the emptiness of the world that keeps you busy and prevents you from being in committed prayer, reading of scripture, and church on Sunday. So we need to focus on this idea of the empty tomb at Easter time. Regardless who you are, committed follower or somebody who's considering a relationship with Jesus Christ, leave your emptiness of the world in the empty tomb.
Instead, follow the risen Lord, recognizing that you are nothing without Christ. All of us, pastors included, need to come to that realization. That's what Easter is supposed to remind us of, that if we want change, we need to follow Jesus Christ in a committed way. Easter is here. The tomb is empty, so our lives will be filled. This is your opportunity today. Easter roughly translates into several different words or phrases like new life, time of opening, change of season, winter to spring. So if you need a new beginning, you need a new spring, you've been walking or struggling through many seasons of winter, as it were, in your life, then you will find hope in the risen Jesus Christ. You no longer have to live empty. This is the blessing of Easter. Instead, connect to church. I mean, let's face it, there's much more hope and inspiration and encouragement if I spend time with other believers who have also been rescued, who also see the blessing of the empty tomb. It's there for each of us, and it's definitely there for us together. Like the women who went together to the empty tomb that first day of the week, Sunday, each Sunday we do the same. We come before God to worship God in church on Sunday mornings so that we can start our week the way that it's supposed to, to worship Him, ask for help, and then, of course, help others who may be struggling at the same time through prayer and encouragement. This is what we're supposed to be searching for. And it's there for us each and every week in church. As King David wrote so long ago in Psalm 39, But now, Lord, what do I look for? My hope is in you. Save me from my transgressions. Do not make me the scorn of fools. The empty tomb is the beginning of a full life for you and me. That's why Easter is such an incredible time. So let's celebrate the empty tomb. Christ the Lord is risen today. We've been rescued from this temporary world. And all we need to do is believe and follow in a committed way. Amen? There'll be a video attached to this song that helps really bring together all the elements of our faith. And think about Easter as such a glorious day. I invite you to watch it. Until the next time we gather, be blessed.